We're at the Sig Sauer Academy and I just wanted to take a minute to kind of cover why we see this huge push on flow through suppressors uh, in the market today. Uh, you know, there's always the cynics out there, they're gonna be like, well, man, that's just the next, the next shiny object, that's, that's marketing, and that's not the case here. Uh, this started about 10 years ago, the military released a couple of reports, the US military did, and they said, look, man, when you shoot small arms, there's a lot of really toxic stuff that comes from that, right? They identified, I think it was about seven different metals, three carcinogens, and we're talking nasty stuff, right? We're talking hydrogen cyanide, we're talking ammonia, we're talking arsenic. Um, I mean, it's, it's poison. And they said, when you fire a gun, and you, especially a semi-automatic, and you put a suppressor on the end, you're pushing a lot more of that poison right back into the shooter's face, like it goes up through the back of the receiver, goes back out around the charging handle. It's breathed in and it's absorbed right into the bloodstream. And so they said, you know, this, this is a problem and it's got to stop. And so, um, especially when you consider where we were 10 years ago, right, we've got uh, two wars going at the time. Um, guys on pre-deployment and in training are shooting now more than they ever have. And, uh, and they're like, this, th we got to fix it. Um, and so that's where the push for flow through suppressors started because what a flow through suppressor does is it minimizes back pressure. It allows all the gas to move out through the muzzle instead of trapping at the muzzle and pushing it back towards the shooter. So that's where the flow through impetus came from. Now, it, there's a couple of problems with flow through suppressors historically, right? Because um, there's been flow through suppressors that have been out for a long time, right? Durability plagued a lot of them. Um, you know, sound reduction was okay, um, but not, not fantastic. Now, you got to understand when, when the military looks at a suppressor, they're looking at this problem of they don't want to poison the shooter. So they want, they want sound reduction. Everybody wants sound reduction. But it's sound reduction to where, hey, I don't always know when the gunfight's going to start, so I got to shoot my rifle sometimes without ear protection on. So they just want to be able to not destroy the guy's hearing, make it to where he can communicate with his teammates without having to yell and scream. So they want some sound reduction, but that's not the, the top consideration. The top consideration is let's not poison the guy shooting the gun. So minimize back pressure, minimize signature reduction. If you stand forward of those flow through, those, those archaic, those older designs, what you'll see is that hot burning gas moving through the suppressor is grabbing little particles of metal, setting them on fire, and then blasting them out the front, which gives you a nice fireball to look at. So when you got guys shooting at you, like fireball, 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 that's where they at, direct all your fire there. So they, they couldn't have that. So they're like, look, minimize back pressure, minimize signature forward of the, of, of the rifle, and then give me the best sound reduction that you can. So that's where the problem started. That's the struggle up until now. SIG has got two new suppressors that, that dominate in those categories, right? And SIG is winning a lot of contracts in the military right now. I'm talking to buddies of mine at SOCOM, the, the SLX, this one right here, um, is doing particularly well uh, because it gives you unprecedented reduction in back pressure. Now, you know, the military, when they started looking at this problem, they built a couple of, of different instrumentation uh, devices to measure this. Crane's got a little box, right? It goes around the receiver. You know, they stick the muzzle out and they shoot and they measure the amount of the particulates inside that box. You know, the Army built a much bigger box to stand in, but bottom line is they both get an accurate, accurate measurement of that particulate. So the SLX, using that instrumentation, will give you a 70 to 80 percent reduction in poison coming back to the shooter. That's flow through, that's awesome back pressure reduction, Right, so that's the SLX. The SLH, the low toxicity hybrid design, uh, gives you about a 50% reduction in toxicity to the shooter. So why the two options, right? Well, they both do a phenomenal job about signature reduction forward of the muzzle, right? There's no fireballs coming out the end of these things. They give you varying reductions in poison to the shooter because this one gives you good sound suppression, but this one gives you excellent sound suppression. It's a balancing act. The more gas you trap at the muzzle, the quieter the gun's going to be to a degree, but the more you're going to push gas towards the shooter, the less gas you trap at the muzzle, you're going to have not quite as good sound reduction, but you're going to get much better 
reduction of toxicity to the shooter. So uh, anyway, I just want to take a minute and cover down on and answer that question of why the, the huge push of flow through suppressors and, you know, a brief explanation of why SIG is doing so well. Um, you know, I'd like to thank SIG for sponsoring this video. And if you want to know more about the SLX, the SLH, you can go to uh, SIGSour.com.